<laughs> yeah, enjoy it, Sade. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Outspoken, the series where I interview a different rider on each race. And this time, I have one of my main competitors of the whole time, Troy Brosnan. Hello, Troy. Hello. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Really good. Let's dive right into the subjects. Okay. You've been battling for overall the overall of the World Cup many years now mm -hmm. because you've been like in top three for how many years? Five in a row. Five in a row. Going for six. <laughs> six in a row now because you're still in the like Amory, Troy, Loic is the trio I we can see at the moment. Yeah. Is this battle a little bit different of the from the years before? How do you feel this year compared to the year? Do you like it? Do you enjoy it? Or I how think. Is it? Yeah, for me this year, it's like more fun in a way because uh, like you got the lead at the start and then had some problems. I got the lead and it felt like I did some results that got me to the lead type thing that helped me get there, not just kind of being given some, some yeah. stuff in the past. So um, I feel like this year the battle is so close and so tight that it's like exciting and fun. It's not just like I'm rolling through underneath Aaron Gwynn and do a good race and then he gets a flat tire and then I get the number one plate and then it kind of Josh Bryson comes in yeah. and smokes us all. But uh, <laughs> and then every other race, like every other year, I've just been like third. Mm -hmm. I haven't had the number one plate and like been close and then been fighting right up there. It's just been like third, third, third. Yeah, second true. once like you've, so. been, like you've been close and you've been leading the overall uh, this year mm. and like it's going on and off and the gap is a bit big not so big and then really close again yeah but don't you feel and i have this feeling that it's really a lot of pressure because neither you or amory is going to do a mistake like you guys are on top like we saw danny did a little mistake in Leger. yeah like, pretty much cracked. Uh, I don't know if it was under pressure or whatever, yeah. but now it's not so much in the mix. Yeah. Maybe yeah. yes, but doesn't seem like it. Yeah. But with you and Amory, it's like, fuck, <laughs> it's impossible to get, like I'm doing my best season ever and I cannot make a gap on you because you're always first, second, third. Like yeah. it's, and then when I do first, you're second. And when I'm second, which is good, you're first or third. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. How do you feel about that? Like, yeah. I think like, like obviously for fans and everyone watching it's amazing because they never know who's going to be yeah. right up there they're like everyone's like oh are you you're going to get it this time are you, are you going to beat the frenchies that's like my number one question right now is like are you going to beat the frenchies this week <laughs> i don't know like you don't know but i think uh it's exciting just like knowing when you're in the start gate or like even coming into the weekend you know you have to try and win and like if you make one time mistake on your run, you or Amory is going to win. Yeah. So it's like... That's the problem. Yeah, because you can't... Because Amory is battling with you for the overall. Yeah, yeah. And, you know. It's just like... But the thing is, you can't just roll down the track. I know. Because then you're not fast enough. I know. <laughs> so, I don't know. You seem to have the, the right balance just now. You're a, a little I gap. Know. I don't know, man. But it's just, uh, yeah. It's really hard to judge each time yeah. because in Niger I tried to be a little bit more smart because I really wanted to push but I didn't really feel comfortable with going as fast as Amory for example yeah. so I was a little bit more conservative yeah with still pushing and stuff but but when you when people tell you beat the Frenchie is it like something the Frenchies is it still is it something like that annoys you or is it just the the hype of the spectators and stuff that I think it's funny, like I don't really have anything that like grinds my gears, like I'm just happy to be riding my bike and we're here racing in this interview, right? So yeah. it's, it's good. So when they say it, it's almost like fire for me, it's like, you know, I, I will try and beat them this year, like this, this race, whatever it is. So I don't know, it's, uh, it's kind of just fun, <laughs> part of the game, right? Yeah. And you've got to have a level head. But it's hard, like you over the years have had the consistency many many times mm -hmm. and you won two world cups over the last what five years four years yeah four or five years yeah and you've been always so close like i didn't win many world cups but on some world cups i won you were just second or it was super tight you're you're annoying <laughs> <laughs> do you choose consistency or do you 
want to commit more and try to win more? Or what's the what's happening in your brain? I think like for me, a big thing is uh, like when I'm at a weekend race and I feel comfortable, I will push hard and go for the win, like really step outside my boundaries. Like I'm not a rider that tends to go over that line of crashing type thing. Like I don't go over that too much. Um, like at the last two races, um, I felt really comfortable like Val Nord and I, after qualifying and we were so tight and I was like, okay, like tomorrow, like race day, I'm going to push and I'm going to like go for the win. Okay. Being on the ground both times. I know. So for me, my riding style, like pushing on the edge isn't the best way for me to win. Like when I won Fort William, when I won Andorra, it's just another run okay. down the track. Nothing special, nothing out of control. It was just like, I was just comfortable riding at my pace and could probably do that run nine times out of 10. Okay. But then do you feel like there is something you have to work on? Yeah. To, to stop this strike of consistency, but win more. Well, Cause if, if you have this consistency, but on the first place, we fucked, you know, so. <laughs> That's exactly right. Like I could push the limit and ride at a hundred percent, not 95% and maybe crash a bit more, but my in my head my goal is to ride at 95 percent but win all the time okay so that's that's what we're trying to do and then okay. you you'd be fucked yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that's like but is it uh, yeah. possible you think riding 95 percent today or 90 90 yeah and still be winning don't know i'm close right now but it hasn't been possible yet so Wait and see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's not so good for, for us. Yeah. Because, yeah. But you guys are like used to riding the edge and you guys seem to like crash and be okay with crashing a little bit where when I crash, I don't do it much. So I get a bit rattled. So for me, crashing is not the biggest and best thing, but I've been practicing crashing lately, so maybe I'll get used to it. So yeah, so the thing you need to improve actually is crashing. Yeah, maybe I just crash more and then it's easier to go faster and easier to crash. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's only this your problem. So yeah. Like, yeah. And back to Léger, mm -hmm. what did you think about the race? And you got fourth, like out of the top three, which just out of it. Yeah. For the first time in many races. Mm -hmm. What happened? I... I'm not sure, like, I don't say anything happened. Um, I was like pushing the limit and just like the limit of my, my limit without crashing and it just wasn't fast enough. But I watched your run, I watched every run, runs, but your run seemed like you were similar but you were just a bit more flow than okay. what I was finding. Okay. And then Amory was just on a... It was a tagging. On another level of... Yeah on the edge, <laughs> very yeah. on the edge. And even he said that. So, um, yeah, I don't think anything was wrong. I just wasn't fast enough. Okay. That's pretty much. And you were a little bit, um, like you say, rattled after Andorra maybe. Yeah, well that didn't help. That was like a, a very big, for me, yeah. it was a very big crash. It happened so sudden and I kind of like, I didn't hit my head, but my head got kind of like whipped around pretty quickly. Um, my knee was swollen, but it was fine and that wasn't slowing me down. But I think, uh, yeah, I took a step back yeah. and then especially going to Leger when it was so fast, I was a bit like, like, okay, yeah. like previous years were good. I won there in Crankworx and stuff and I was just having fun going fast where at the World Cup, I was a bit like, okay, this is, you yeah. always step up, right? Even Crankworx to World Cup, there's always that extra yeah, for sure. level. But I yeah. saw you crash and in Andorra, I didn't know at the finish that you crashed and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned by, with Mono actually later uh, after the race that you had a big one and after the finish you were pretty dizzy and not yeah. so feeling good. I'm sorry about this and you still got there, so it's, yeah. it's <laughs> yeah. so unreal. Yeah, that like, was, uh, I don't know how I got third. Like I was like completely busted up the front end of my bike, never done that before mm. and just like had to walk back up the track in the middle of the practice because 
the front wheel was hitting the fork so hard that I couldn't keep riding down. Okay, I didn't know that. And then, so I got back up, changed to my like spare bike, like the telemetry bike. Um, that was, we weren't using that weekend because we were kind of just set in what we had. Okay. So the brakes weren't perfect and rolled down a, the last practice run and then just Aaron, like my mechanic, got the, the race bike ready again and fixed and jumped on and just mm. <laughs> tried. Okay. And then remember we're up the top. Yeah. Like I was getting ready to go in the gate. You were right there, and then we hear Loris's time, and we were both like, "Oh That's shit!" True, like that. And then I'm thinking, okay, I went fast yesterday. Now I have to go like five seconds faster, yeah, or whatever exactly. it was. Yeah. And, and on I'm the like, track that was pretty slow. Yeah. Like it was getting yeah. slower, right? Because it was yeah. blown, and I was like, "Shit!" Like, I don't yeah, know if I got this. Yeah. Mentally, you're like stressed out you yeah. don't know what to do last minute information you're like no i didn't want it yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and then i like looked at you and you like you're like okay let's do this and i'm like screw it let's do it <laughs> and then we both went real fast so yeah uh, that's the good thing about yeah it. i don't think if i had the choice i wouldn't want to hear his time but i think it was almost good because it was like okay we have to yeah. go like a little kick in the ass yeah like, okay, exactly you have to go a little bit faster than what you expected yeah yeah, yeah. but we We've been always in, like you're only one year older than me, mm -hmm. so we've been always competitors. You were way faster at the beginning in yeah. juniors and stuff, but we were almost teammate on in 2016. Yeah, and like we just started specialized gravity program, and you were still specialized racing, I think. Then yeah, yeah. But we were not That's staying true. with the same structure and stuff. And did you have the choice of continuing it or joining us or? Did, if you didn't have it, if you would have had the choice, would you have joined us? Yeah, I think. And become teammate? Yeah, looking back on it, um, they gave me the choice whether to go into, like, combined with you in Laurent's team um, or stay the same as what we've had. And it was a hard choice because, like, I wanted to be with teammates and obviously with you. Like, I wasn't like scared of being your teammate right because i've had sam hill brendan aaron like yeah. We've had a lot of people yeah. above me so i wasn't scared of having someone right next to me at the same speed but i didn't want to change what was working so well previously okay. so in 2015 i was like really fast but just had some crashes and little things to adjust and then so i didn't want to change that for 2016 so i kind of went screw it we'll just do our own thing and it was like it was kind of good because we had flexibility just Aaron and myself like the my mechanic and uh but just not having an extra teammate to bounce lines or like hang out yeah like now like just chilling like it just kind of got a bit kind of like not stressful but just not relaxing yeah and then because you were the only rider pretty much yeah yeah it was just it was all around you maybe yeah like it was it was good because Aaron's like my best friend as well as my mechanic. So we were just hanging out and having fun and driving around and whatnot. But it just wasn't, just didn't feel like, you know, how you get the team vibe and everyone's working for each other. It just wasn't really that. Okay. So I wouldn't say I regret it, but it would have been interesting to go into your structure and see how that would have worked. And I was scared to go in your structure because all the French... I didn't know if I was just going to be on my own anyway, you know, like yeah. separated. So it was a tough decision. Um, I don't know. Kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah, it's in the in the end. No, I know, it's, but it would have been a different. Yeah, different story. Path. Like even for your team, it would have mm. been so much different not having you. Yeah. And stuff, you know. So you are working not with Fabian Barrel, but sometimes he's at yeah. the races. Maybe he's coming again this week. I don't know. But Maybe. how is it to work with someone as French as Fabien? Because he is, he is top level French, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's be honest, know, you're know French, he's, he's probably French here. I don't know what's you guys levels of Frenchness, but <laughs> I've heard like he's pretty French. He's pretty French. Yeah. Um, like he's skin suit French. Yeah. That's pretty. No peak, no things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, honestly, like, the first year working with him, it was hard. Like we were so opposite okay. like of people. Like he's 
to the point, like very precise with how he does everything working or writing or lines and everything. So, and I'm Aussie laid back, just it will come together when it comes together. Like I'm OCD and clean and everything, but just hanging out and like, you know, having fun at the race is my thing where he was so driven. Yeah. So that really like was hard for us to connect. And then, uh, last year so the second year on the team we like started to gel a lot more and understand each other and and agree a lot more okay and then this year it's like completely better again it's like i don't know if i've de-frenched him or he's frenched me or something <laughs> but like it's really good now like he's he'll come and like go on the track and get like give lines and look at your lines and and see what we're doing and he'll he'll almost, almost know like okay like Troy's riding style, he doesn't want to do, he's not going to want to do that line, so let's make him faster on this line. Okay. Like this might not be the fastest line, but let's make it the same speed and it's going to be better for me throughout the whole run. Okay. So like somehow we've gelled really well and it's awesome. Like I, I think, I think also previous, like you had Sam Hill, my mentor, and Fabian, they were battling all the time. True. And they never really got along. Mm -hmm. So I guess in my head, I was never... You were on Sam's side. Yeah, exactly. So it was hard the first year, and then I opened up, he opened up, and then now it's a lot better. What does Sam Hill think about you now that you're a little bit French? <laughs> does it matter what Sam Hill thinks? He's enduro now. True. <laughs> you just push him to the he side. Fucked it up. Yeah. <laughs> He retired to enduro, you know. Okay. No, he's. I don't. I don't know. But don't Fabian, like to me, I've never seen someone so pro and so uh, productive. Also, yeah. like when I see him talking to you, or sometimes we just talk in winter or whatever. We saw each yeah. other. We see each other. The way he speaks to you, it's always like philosophic almost, and then you always. It's uh, intense. You learn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like and every so time. I, I think it's it's a good thing. Yeah. For even though like. Especially now that you guys, you guys get along Gelling, better. Yeah, yeah. How do you say? Gelling. Gelling yeah. together. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing, I think, for you. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Last year, we, in Mont Saint Anne, we were really close, first and second. Yeah. Point two or three. Yeah, two, five or three. Something really, also, yeah. really tiny on such a long like track. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're going again for World Champs this time. Yeah. In 19. How do you see it? How do you feel from last year? And how do you see this year? It's I not think, yet there, but... Yeah, yeah. I think uh, for me, and I guess you're in the same boat, I feel like I've stepped up with like my bike set up a lot from last year, okay. especially to suit that track. And I'm not trying to like put pressure yeah, on you. He's trying, he's trying. Because no, <laughs> you've done the same thing, right? You've stepped your bike up. Yeah, we'll have a, a little we bit. have a new bike. So, yeah, but but uh, yeah, like this this off season, we we kind of took the goods and the bads from the tracks and uh, put forward what we think is going to be best for Mont Saint Anne okay. type thing. Like this is part of Fabian's thing as well. Like thinking he's always been the world champion, like like yourself, like really good at just that one yeah. race. So yeah, we've discussed about that, and I think. Uh, I think it'll be good. Like I, I'm sure it'll be close again. It's it's always going to be. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for what we've kind of tested and what's like lying forward for such a fast track as well. And when you you are second or third or close to the win, but not on the top spot, I have to ask you a question because you always seems you always seem so happy. Like yeah, it's good. I had a good time. Positive, 100%. And you never like fuck this shit. This is dickhead who like you know. <laughs> you never like mad, or you don't seem mad. Are you actually positive in your head, or are you just mad and you're just good at playing positive? Like, I think, like I'm positive all the time because like getting close to the win or third or like on the podium every race this season, it's not bad, is it? Yeah, no, it's for a sure. great thing. So. I see the positive side of that and I'm happy for being a World Cup racer that races a bike and has fun and everything. Like mum always says, no matter what happens, smile on your face. I could have a good run and get 20th, still be smiling. But inside, like, it's hard. 
it is hard. Like I want to beat you and you've won multiple times and I'm like being close a lot of them and I'm thinking like, shit, like what, what can I do to get there? But I enjoy getting beaten because it's a learning curve on how to get better. So, okay, I've only won two World Cups. I wish I won way more. I've been point nothing off of a lot of yeah. World Cup wins and, and lost a lot of them being so close. But it's kind of fun getting beat at the same time for me because it's just like, okay, learn, learn, learn. And I accept the process that it's going to take okay. to win. And I know one day it's going to happen. So I'm not like, I'm not angry because it's a process that's going to get there eventually. Pretty wise. I'm like, whoa. Like I'm confident yeah. of one uh, obviously. day it's going to happen. Obviously. So I'm not worried. Like if I don't get the World Cup overall this year, it's going to happen. It's all good. It'll happen next year, year after. Doesn't okay. Matter. Yeah. That's pretty good. Like when I got, if I do a good run and I'm eighth or tenth or whatever, yeah. I would always be like so mad inside of me. Yeah. And it's hard to be, of course, the days after, the weeks after you learn from it and then you see where you did the mistakes and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But on the day or the day after, it's so yeah. hard. Like I, I admire you for this. Yeah. You're always like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, good job, man. Yeah. And even though I will always say good job to you, to Amory, to whoever wins, yeah. in the back of me, I'm like, Dah! you know? Cha! <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what. Maybe that's why you're so good at being there because you're never emotionally extreme. Yeah, like, yeah. Super stoked, super angry, super whatever. So you're like just flat, floating yeah. on the... On maybe the... I need to get angry more. <laughs> maybe I'm Yeah, but maybe, more maybe at the same time you'll be like winning one and then right down, crashing yeah. the other one. Yeah. So yeah, it's hard to judge. Yeah. But you learned from Gu um, Sam Hill, Ferklov yeah. and Gwyn, but... I didn't know, Aaron, uh, Mono actually told me that you were really good friends with Aaron. Yeah. Queen. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your relation with him and what do you think of him struggling compared to when he was your teammate? Yeah. This he, year? Yeah, he was like, he was a really good teammate actually. Like he was really level, wasn't, you know, he was, when he came on to Specialized and was all the big, you know, number one, he didn't act like that around me. Like it was very level. It was kind of like, you know, if, if we were asking where we want to go to dinner, he'd be like, Troy, do you have anywhere you want to go to? He wasn't just like, we're going here, we're doing this. Like you think because he's so like precise and stuff with how he rides and like just full, like that's his line and he's just going, you'd think he'd be like, no, nah, we're going to that dinner restaurant. Okay. He's just, no, he's relaxed, pretty chill. Um, I, I'm asking you this because I don't really know yeah. Aaron is yeah. it's pretty like if you're his teammate maybe it's easier but if you're his competitor it's pretty hard to break the the, yeah, the wall sure. of the rivalry you know yeah, yeah like he's always yeah. like yeah hello like nice cool yeah. and stuff but never eager to talk yeah he doesn't open up heaps yeah. yeah but with his like his racing he came on board um what year was that 2013 14 15 13. 13? Yeah, 13, because that was the last year we were on the um, demo with 26. Okay. And the bike wasn't quite, it kind of was outdated that year, and we both didn't have the great greatest season, especially his year before was like win, 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 champion, all this. And then went to the Specialized on the new bike, and it was having those runs that he was having last year, but getting 10th. So he had a bad year and he was like pretty frustrated, but it was all behind closed doors. But he was probably like yourself, like really mad about it because he's done so well, changed bike company and it wasn't quite the perfect fit. Okay. And then he did a lot of work with the engineers and specialized in making the new 650B bike. And then the next year we both like rose back up. Like yeah. he went back to like number one and then he kind of brought me with him, okay. which I don't know how he feels about that because <laughs> he went to number one and then I won Fort William and went to number two and it was amazing. We were one and two for ages, but then he had that sure. Lear Gang thing. I went to number one and then instantly it was like, you could tell we went from riding together and sharing lines to it was a bit separated. Yeah. 
Like that did happen because obviously he wants to win so badly and I'm like the first time winning. So I'm kind of still excited. I'm like, yeah, let's ride together. But he was a bit like kind of taken back because obviously he wanted to be number one and now he had the number two plate. So it didn't ruin our relationship. We just didn't ride together heaps on the rest of the World Cups. But I really feel that this is normal. Yeah, like... Like, even, even though... Because you, before you were with him in the team, you were not best friends. No. So it's a teammate friends relationship, but when it's... The tension is that high, it changes naturally everything. Yeah, exactly. Not everything, yeah. but a lot of things yeah. around biking, especially. Yeah. Like, and if we were teammates, would you practice with me every run? Not every run. No, of course no, not. I'm sure not. Because you've got things that you don't want me to see, and I've got things, you know. Yeah. Line-wise, there is always, like, we have the same people on track with for Finn and I, so we know pretty much what the other one is doing all the yeah. time. But it's also for, like, pace-wise and setup-wise, like, there is a lot of things that you find and you want to keep for yourself. Yeah. Even though you could share, but the guy is going to... is gonna want to beat you anyway so you don't want to share something that could make you second or third exactly so yeah. it's there is a balance but as, as long as you we both know that there is stuff that we keep for each other for ourselves yeah. like mechanic and rider yeah. it's okay yeah but I feel like in every team there is always a moment when it's like a little bit harder even though now I've never felt I've never I've never been as close to the overall and Amori with Amori and stuff now and yeah. now that I see Amori I see him as a friend still, but I still don't speak as much about yeah, everything right. because it's like, right. okay, you can yeah. fuck me. <laughs> so there is this, it's pretty funny and pretty cool, but yeah. it is there. It's natural, I think. Yeah. But I think that's like what's amazing about this sport is because it's individual and it's so like almost family orientated, it's still like cool, like it's chill. Like yeah. if you look at F1, they... Like you and I would hate each other I on know, F1. I know. It's insane. Where I like, I came from BMX where it was, it was like F1. Like all the mums and dads were just like going at each other and not sharing anything. And then you come here, it's like, if we're at the top of the track and you for some reason had a flat tire and no spare wheel and we had one that would fit, I mm. would give it to you. Cause you're like, you're not going to be like, nah, screw you. I'm going to win the championship now because you've got a flat tyre. It's like, I want to beat you fairly. But it's like, I feel like the, the family thing in the sport allows that kind of thing. For sure. And I think if we are aware of it and we uh, feed it kind of with yeah. being still staying chill, like cool with each other, I think it's really good for the sport. Yeah. But one question, if I... If you give me a wheel and I win and you're second, <laughs> what do you think? Then you might see me angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd definitely give you a wheel with a brand new rotor on it so you don't have oh, yeah. brake for half the run. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. You still have to give me a little. Yeah, know. just a little, you know. <laughs> for sure. Uh, but no, I, I, I agree. I think yeah. it's, it's really cool. And then I've had like many people here at this thing and there's more, some people like you, we never really spent hours talking to each other maybe sometime at party no. when we like this we like, hey, <laughs> I got some photos of you still oh okay <laughs> show, <Whatever>. show you <laughs> later <laughs> but you know it's it's good because we still mates yeah and like I'm I'm first first one it was with Amori I'm really good friends with him and then yeah. with Greg like yeah. I don't really know him so much but he's really cool like everyone is just so chill about yeah. racing and everything so yeah, it's like easy to talk to right yeah, we're I not sitting it. here going like mono what's the next question yeah. we're just talking yeah it's really yeah i love it i love yeah. it yeah but actually i'm gonna look no i have a question yeah. <laughs> it's a good one <laughs> <laughs> um so i have finn yeah as teammate and he was junior long ago you have mark which is a little bit slower than you at the moment and Kai, which is a junior. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about junior and helping other riders in your team or to, to get to you? Do you do it on purpose or do they just analyze what you do, observe? What do you think like, about? Honestly, like Mark and I have um, had like a really good relationship since we've gone on to Canyon. And it's been, it's actually been really interesting. Like we both have talked about it and what, 
my problems are and what his problems are are opposite. So I struggle to find the perfect line and get up to speed fast on day one. Okay. And he finds it hard to, once he's got all his, like he can go fast and find the lines early, but he finds it hard to like turn the dial that bit more for the race winning speed, right? Okay. So we actually like work together like a lot on, I'll follow him on the first couple of runs and he will get all the lines and like the speed straight away and like, I'll be like, holy shit, we're going fast already, okay. but we're probably not going that fast. And then once we got everything somewhat dialed, he'll follow me and I'll bring him up to that like raw kind of speed, the faster okay. speed. And it tends to like work really well. And he knows it, like he knows that that's his problem. I know that that's my problem at the start. And it just like works. Cause when I was younger, when I was a junior with Sam Hill, Sam would, I'd follow him every run and he'd go so fast, but he'd look so smooth that it was easy for me to follow him. Okay. Like I didn't realize how fast we were going. And then into qualifying as a junior, I'd get like top 10 and he'd get first. And I'd just be like, What's, go what's going on? Cause he but because he's just so smooth, yeah. yeah. So Mark's the same, like he's, he's smooth and easy to follow and then same with me. So it's like, we're both easy to follow each other mm. and it kind of works. And then with Kai the Junior, we kind of, he'll follow us behind both of us and try and you know get up to speed that way. But we help him with lines. And I think that's his main problem is finding those little straight line yeah. here, open this up, don't go, 10 Ks over in the outside <laughs> over there. I know it's smoother, but just don't do it. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I think the Mark and I, and I situation is really like helpful for each other. Cause and I've never found that with anyone before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's like Sam always helped me, but I could never help him. And then Aaron helped me and then we kind of, you know, did the split. So it kind of, we didn't really bounce too much off of that. Okay. And when we were juniors, both you and I, we didn't have the category, you know, we were racing in elite. Yeah, yeah, We, yeah, we still yeah, had like yeah. the, the category. Jersey, yeah. yeah. But we never had like a junior category, yeah. with, like qualifying and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, what do you think about this? Really quick, just. I think it's better how it was. Okay. Because, okay, now you have a junior category and you're like first in juniors and qualifying and you're racing juniors, but they don't push to win well, not win, but they don't push to qualify an elite. Remember, we had to qualify. Otherwise, you're pff, gone. Then you have to push to, like, get any result and get looked at. So for me, the, the only junior right now pushing to try and do well in elite is the Frenchie. Yeah, Thibaut. Thibaut. Yeah. Like, he, in Andorra, he qualified really well. He pushed, he crashed, but he might have got a top 10, if not maybe podium result. Yeah, but at the Andorra. same time, at the same time, they have their own track kind of and their own pace because we race later, the track is a bit dead and yeah. there is like 20 juniors in finals when, when we were racing, there was like two or three. Yeah. It was so small, the field. Yeah. So I think it's better for like all the juniors in general, like coming and having their own race and stuff. Yeah. But I think juniors are going to find it tough if they just race themselves. They need to still try and race us yeah at one point they have to compare with yeah, yeah sure. like the second year in juniors you have to be thinking okay i don't want to get first in junior i want to get 10th in elite yeah and that's the only way like we're not going okay i just want to beat you because amory will beat both of us like you and i like we have to beat everyone and win we're not thinking about just like tipping over mm -hmm. one person and getting point like in andorra when we qualified really tight I was like, okay, I don't want to win by really tight. I want to win by this. <laughs> so I like tried to push for that, right? Yeah, that was so close. I took it. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care who's. I come uh, down and I look up and I'm like, oh, there's Lewick again. And then I like look across and I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> zero. I was, yeah. I was like, no way. Yeah. That's, that's a joke. And because we're battling like yeah. we're five points off, so it swapped the lead as well. So it was like the full like hype yeah. of everything for uh, this it's yeah, cool literally yeah and we spoke a little bit before and this weekend you have a different setup 
Yeah. So tell me about it. Did you did you try it because it's proven that it's pretty good, or did you just wanted to try it and now that you have the parts or whatever? Well, it almost stems back to pre-season testing before Maribor, before the world, first World Cups. Um, Aaron and I were testing a larger frame, hybrid, full 29, trying to like see what we could do to, to you always trying to go faster, right? And we were puzzling. We were okay. too much, way too much trying to change. Then we chose to stay with 650, go onto a large frame so we could get the wheelbase longer and be more stable. And it helped a lot. Okay. Um, and then we had a couple of issues where we were losing front end traction and stuff. So we decided in this break, we had 12 days at home, like 12 days of like jet lag, training, yeah. testing, that was it. So got home, got over jet lag, tested, and the whole thing that we were trying to do was not testing for now, but testing for next year. Okay. So we weren't, we weren't adamant that we were gonna change anything. We're, like, we were super happy with what we have, um, but we just wanted to test the hybrid setup for next year because that's what we're probably gonna tend to lean on for next year. Okay. Just kind of the way that the sport is kind of going. I yeah, think. and your writing style and stuff. Exactly. Um, so we, we tested that and instantly it was like a, felt like I was cheating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like it felt like we, we put heaps of like time and energy of the setup to like make sure when I swapped to the hybrid setup that everything, the wheelbase and the head angle and everything was exactly the same as what I'm currently running. Yeah. And the only thing that was changed was the bar height was seven or eight mil higher, um, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it can be, you know, like those things For sure. can happen. It's pretty, like to me, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we were a bit nervous on that. That's why we were kind of not too keen on, on just being committing to running it this season. But we did uh, one day of just like comfortable feeling and, and riding and it just, it felt really good. Um, got the suspension dialed with the telemetry stuff we have. Um, had a couple of days off and then went back to the track that I do all my testing on and did times and it was faster. So we were like, what do we do? Do we stay on what we know or do we go with something that is faster? And obviously you're gonna go with something faster, right? Mm. So um, I haven't spent much time on it, which is a little bit unsure. And you never know until you get to a World Cup, like you can do all the testing in the world, you get to a World Cup, it's always different. So, um, be interesting. You start like that though, tomorrow. Yeah, hybrid. Then maybe we're in trouble, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that was it. Yeah. Thanks for your time and... Like, comment if you think, if you think the boys should talk about contract stuff. Yeah. So yeah, what you, like motocross, what? Well, yeah, so you think you've got our contracts, which are like, Closed. Yeah. No one knows. And but it's actually a term in your contract. In my contract. Yeah, yeah. This same is with me. You can't talk with anyone. But then you go like other end of the spectrum, Formula One. Everyone knows money, years, whatever it is. They know it. Then there's like motocross, where say if like I'm on a contract year right now, if I was to change teams, as soon as I like sign the contract and then the world champs or like the last World Cup is finished, I'll be riding the. Yeah. They ride the new bike straight away. It's like the contract's just like... Which is like, kind of smart. Which is good because it gives the rider more time to gel with the new bike or whatever. But then a company's holding us to January 1st yeah. to I fuck us. I, yeah, I don't understand why actually they yeah. do that. Because the season stops in, let's say, end of September. Yeah. And they keep us waiting for and three months. Secret. I feel like... We should like so, talk about it, like riders, in a closed, like, you know, not too gnarly to try and open. I'm not saying, oh, you make a million dollars, I make a million dollars. But for sure. But, but we, we should like. For sure, the team managers are doing it. I know yeah. that they don't make meetings and stuff, but they 
speak because they, they don't have nothing to do in racing but in races but they have a lot of time so i think my manager knows how much you earn yeah what's your like what are your terms and they circulate the infos really well but if we do it too riders yeah maybe we could bring everything up up that's like, what i'm thinking optimize yeah someone's uh, income because he should get more uh, yeah you know stuff like this like yeah that would be interesting but it's pretty hard it to seem so closed off yeah. to me yeah, yeah yeah like i'm i'm baffled confused on why it's so like sh like i would like even loris that i'm close really close to yeah. i've never tell, told him how much i make and yeah. he never told me how much he made so it's 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 pretty taboo if you yeah. can you say this yeah like it's well what was it when Aaron went on to YT? Wasn't their numbers getting thrown around? Was did he say something or was he said something? I think he did say he something. Outspoken, like I don't know the way yeah. you say that, but he was like, okay, I asked, I asked for for five hundred thousand for frames only at Specialized, yeah. and they said no. So he went to YT, and then he said, I think he more or less said he was earning close to a million. Yeah, right. But that was for the team. Okay, I don't know. I didn't. Really I think that was like. That was for like the whole team package. Yeah, maybe. So there's these these things, but like if if Aaron's earning a million, I We've want fought. more money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. So I think it'd be like good because you think there's like the top five right now, which would be on good money, like more than the average worker person. Yeah. And then if you're under the top ten, you almost need a second job. Yeah. That's how like high but yeah not like it's like and then it just drops yeah but that's why it's also like brands they they have this power yeah like they know they have the power of telling you what to do for that much money so yeah. that's, that's maybe why if we kind of collaborate all together it could yeah. be good yeah but i think he try wants to say to everyone his income for that <laughs> it's a million dollars no i wish <laughs> Pesos, but yeah, <laughs> no, I think it's cool. We will keep it in, yeah, in well, what a token. What do you guys think? Thank you, Trevor Bosnan. Thank you, uh, auditors. Auditors, auditors? <laughs> auditors. <laughs> thanks to the audience, <laughs> and see you out there and stay tuned. <laughs>